Well, welcome to Coffee with Job, or in today's case, uh, Water with Job, because our electricity is off. There's been what they call an outrage here in our Tarman. Uh, something I suspect we're going to have to get used to as the country goes more and more green and ends up relying on unreliant energy. But who knows? We shall see. One thing we do know is that this is the word of God and that it is sure and certain. And so we return to a man whose life was very uncertain in so many ways and who needed that word. And that is, of course, Job. Incidentally, some of you asked, I just wanted to share, uh, this is where I sit in the mornings and I love reading this guy, Thomas Manton. Um, I've just been reading again, The God Who Is There with Francis Schaeffer, which is I'm going to write about it because I'd read it before and Schaefer's way ahead of his time and so important for us, I think. And then, of course, I have my trusty Sam book, my uh, very worn Book of Common Prayer. Uh, I have a Aquinas on my Kindle and I have St. Jerome here, as well as uh, my own diary, which I write entirely not for publication, just my personal diary and all of that of course focuses around the word of God and that's what I want us to uh, look at just now and chapter 38 and again one this is one of these chapters that people read and they just go through it because they go yeah it's poetic that's you know it's nice let's let's get on with the real stuff but I think we need to slow down and meditate on this stuff and that's why we're taking a bit of time with this so we are into Verse 31 of chapter 38, God speaking. Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the law of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you? Here we are. Who gives the ibas wisdom or gives the cockerel understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds or who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Now, we'll come back to the animals and I love that image of the, the cockerel having understanding. But for me, this was a huge thing in my becoming a Christian. Uh, just walking, uh, growing up in the highlands of Scotland, little light pollution, seeing the stars and trying to work out the vastness and the greatness and I do think stopping and slowing down and, 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 and looking at that is so important. Um, I also think that maybe as we think about all this together, we saw an application yesterday of all of this is to let God be God, but another application is it helps us, this, these things help us grow in our Christian lives. How? We grow by becoming smaller. Job, like us, has a finite and limited understanding. We will never grow if we consider that our understanding is infinite and unlimited. It's like my atheist friends who say, well, unless God proves himself, or unless I can see this, or unless I have this evidence. And I want to say to them, what makes you think you have the capacity to be able to judge that evidence? The great subjects mentioned in this chapter, the Earth's rotation, oceanic currents. Uh, we're in a, one of those, uh, El Nina I think it's here just now, which is why we've had such a wet summer. Meteorology, the origin and dispersal of light. Now, in some ways, there are some great scientists who have studied this more and could answer this better than Job. But other questions like astronomical research and so on have a long way to go, and especially back in verse 17, the nature and meaning of death. And I do think that there should be a certain humility that we grow in our Christian lives by realizing how small we are and how great God is. I've told this story before, but it's, I think even in this series, but it's so important. I think it was Roosevelt and Eisenhower. They used to go and lie out on, on the patio of uh, the White House and smoke cigars and lie on their backs and look up the stars. And they did so to remind themselves how small and insignificant they were. Well, I think it would be a good practice for all of us. We're small and insignificant, but loved by the one 
who is greater than more than we can, can comprehend. So, uh, see you tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have electricity and be back to making coffee again. Uh, see you tomorrow and God bless you. Bye.